I'll piggyback on that because last week was a two-parter, so we lined up last week, this week. Out of Romans 8, 26 through 38, 39. Can't touch me now. Can't touch me now. I don't know about y'all, but as a child of God, there are certain things that we, we fear. I mean, let's be real. Because I'm, I'm, I'm grown in the Lord and growing. Death is not a great big fear anymore. It used to be. I used to be scared to death because I didn't get, I didn't understand. I got Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to have it out. Yeah. I'm going to die. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know where. I don't know where. <laughs> and because of that, I because there's a lot against me and you and us. And so it took me a while to figure out that it's good news. That I'm going to die, okay? But death ain't no big deal. And if death isn't a big deal, what you scared of? I'm scared of dying, but it's no big deal. It is the, the one dying, right? And so it takes a while to figure this thing out. And when I would get kind of in this thing because I've been, in, I've been in the saddle preaching for 35 years. I've done thousands of funerals. I've done thousands and thousands of visits. I've seen way too many people die. I've been there way too many times. And it wears you down. It wears you out. Trust me, it does. It works on every part of a human being's body. You go to distance. Pastors up close and personal all the time. Every day, all day, every waking moment of our lives is given to serve others, or should be. To serve the Lord and serve others, especially in times of duress and distress. If anybody needs good news, may I say, we do. Amen? We do. You know what? I found it. Isn't that cool? It's in the Bible, too. It just happens to be attached to the Romans 8, 26 through 39. We touched on last week, God has a plan. I say again, do you believe that God has a plan and purpose for your life? Do you? Yes. yes. Do you absolutely, without hesitation, reservation, or mental equivocation, do you believe that God has a plan for your life? Yes. I do too. If it's true that God has a plan and a purpose for your life, why play the victim? And we do. Oh, you just don't know what I've gone through. Yeah. Don't make me say I don't care because I don't mean it that way. But no matter how much I care, I can't change it, right? We have to live every day, don't we? We live in faith or fear, don't we? We live running to the cross or away from the cross. Make your choice. We, we live in the shadow of the shelf of the cross or away from it. Make your choice. We live in faith in the Lord God Almighty. We live in faith that God's good news. Or we don't. Make your choice. But if you believe that God has a plan, if you believe that God has a purpose, you and I ought to understand that nothing comes to us, nothing occurs, nothing happens that God is not aware of and God's not in control of. Doesn't matter what it is. May I say to you again? How do you teach a child to walk? Don't yell at them. Walk! You know? <laughs> walk! Come on! You can yell if you want to. You won't make that child walk, will you? You can give them an instruction manual. This is how you walk. So I'm not going to give that child walk. Yes, it but what can you do? You can walk. You can support them. You can encourage them. You can hold them. But when they get to be a ten, don't you think you should let them loose? I mean, after a while, they need to they need to walk on their own. You know, God's that way too. God can give you and He does the instruction book, but if you don't want to receive or use it, what good is it? Okay. I can help you all, but somewhere in this thing, we've got to be able to say, "I got it." I'm going to fall. Have you ever fallen in faith? Yeah. You know my daddy was like, can I share my daddy's country wisdom? Fall, fall. Amen? Fail, fall, or fall, fall. Daddy said, when you get up, you're going to fail. Suck it up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. You're going to fall. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Sometimes worse than others. Okay. Sitting and crying to help get that dust off, let's go. And so what do we do? We fall forward in our faith, right? We learn to trust God by falling. We learn to trust God by failure. We learn to trust God by getting out there and living life the best way that we can. Okay. But still 
there's that fear factor that kicks in because we all know one day we're going to die. How do you deal with that? We share. You don't have to stand up. I'll give you that. You don't have to. But let me read you God's good news. You can't be choosing. You don't have to. You can't choose. Likewise, that's a connecting word. It's building a bridge with what has been said and what's going to be said. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we don't know what we should pray for as we ought to know. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot even be uttered. For he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit of Almighty God. Because He makes intercession for the, for the saints according to the will of God. Hear that. God prays for us according to God's will because God knows what God wants and I know. And so when I pray, it filters through God's prayer because when I pray, God may be like jibber jabbers. Jibber jabber. My infant child stops me and he's me. I mean, Charlie's like that. I mean, he's giving me down there and I'm like, I got you, brother. I don't want to say <laughs> But I figure if he's not throwing at me and biting me, it must be something good, you know? You think God's that way too? I mean, sometimes I don't know what I need to pray for. But I'm trying. So God takes those requests and God filters it through His plan and purpose for my life. And God answers prayer whether I understand it or not. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to His purposes. For whom He did foreknow, He did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son so that he might be the firstborn, the first one amen, among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine, that he called, whom he called, he justified, whom he justified, he has already glorified. What shall we say to them these things that have already been said? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. If he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him, Jesus Christ, also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? God justifies. Who is he that condemned? Christ died, yea, rather than is risen again, who is at the right hand of God making intercession for us. Who shall be able to separate us from the love of God? Christ. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? No. For it is written, all we are killed all the day long, we are uh, accounted as the sheep of the slaughter? No. In all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things even to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, family, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. You be seen. Of course we struggle. We struggle because God's will is not our will. God's plan is not my plan. God's purpose is not my purpose. I know what I want. I know what I want right now. And God does not necessarily care what I want. God wants to conform me. God wants to transform me. God wants to re reproduce Jesus in every one of us. And we struggle and we fight because we say that hurts. Growing pains are a booker. Growing pains hurt. And as a child, we reach up and tell God, I don't want what you want. Have you ever tried to make a child eat vegetables? I'm just asking. Have you ever had a, uh, try to get a child to eat something on his plate and that child just does not want to eat? Then we do, then we do the daddy and mama thing. Are you just going to sit there till you eat them? They're like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, two hours later, there's grease on top of it, right? And he's still sitting there because it's just a thing of wisdom. Same thing with God. I mean, God has a plan and God has a purpose and we tell him no. I don't want your plan. I don't want your I don't want to do what you want to do. And God's plan and purpose is to conform us and transform us and reproduce in us Jesus Christ. And He will not stop. He will not let up. He will not quit until we are transformed and we find Christ reproduced in us. And whatever that takes, by whatever means and measures, God has to use and take. God will do that until He breaks our will. God will do that until we bend our will to His will so that when people look at us, they see Jesus in us, the hope of glory. Amen. They see something in us that we, we have received, some gift that we have been given so that even in the darkest, direst times of our lives, there's still the hope beyond this moment of pain to a time yet ours. And we don't get that by reading a book necessarily, though we do. 
You can't receive that by hearing just preaching for the Oliver, though we can. You and I have to go through the trouble sometimes in life. We have to go to the valleys. We have to be in the darkness. We have to be in those times when we are forced to depend upon no one but God. And we are forced on our knees and forced on our faces and forced to the throne of Almighty God. When we are put there, the only place we can look is up. And when we look up, we see the nail scarred hands. When we look up, we see Calvary. When we look up, we find Jesus looking down and saying, What took you so long? Why did I have to do this? Why, did, why, why, why? Don't we do that to our kids? Come on, man. Why did you not get May I use a word my mama and my daddy would use on me? Why are you being stupid? <laughs> why are you being hard-headed? Why did I have to rip you? Why did I have to chase you? Why did I have to discipline you? Why did I have to make you do this? Why, 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 why? I don't have an answer. Do you? And so God says, I have a plan. I have a purpose. I've also got a promise. All things, all things, all things work for good. You believe that? Yes. Death works good. Difficulties work good. What do difficulties do? Run you to Jesus. What does death do? Run you to Jesus. What do troubles, trials, and tribulations that run you to Jesus? Because there is no other place you can go to than Jesus to find comfort and consolation. Is there? Is there? No matter where, I mean, I don't know where you can go. And so knowing that, God gives us these closing verses, and in these closing verses, He reminds us. God knew everything from the, from the end to the beginning. There will never be a time that God will be caught by surprise and say, oh, I didn't say that, God. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that God knows everything about us no matter how badly we mess it up? God is not caught by surprise when we make a mistake, when we deviate from the plan and purposes, when we fall off into the ditch and take a detour. God is not, man, what do I do now? What do I do? God doesn't bring His hands and, and God doesn't get all anxious. God knows our lives. God has a plan and purpose. And no matter how long we stay in the ditch, no matter what the detour may be, God, because God is God and will never be caught by surprise, God still has a plan and purpose. Trust me. How many of us ran from God? How many of us have done stupid things? How many of us have made unwise decisions? How many of us have been in the ditches or on a detour most of our lives? But when we came to the Lord and we said, okay, I'm done. I am done. I'm done running. I'm done fighting. I'm done. I'm done. And God says, about time, right? And then God takes the broken shards of our lives and He brings good out of that. Isn't that cool? I shouldn't even be alive, much less a pastor. But why am I here? I told you, I've shared with you the only thing that I know. God has a plan and purpose. I'm alive because God chose me to live. I'm alive because God wore me alive. Because God wore me to do something. And you do. Don't you think that God can take you home anytime God wants to? Yes. Don't you think He knows your address? And don't you know how He can yank you? Don't you know He can take you home? If God has not yet taken you home, I'm not. Because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And if God has a plan and purpose for your life and my life and our life, can't we at least give him the benefit of the doubt and say, although I don't know what you're doing and why, I want to live up to those expectations, whatever they may be. I want to live up to the plan and purpose of my life, no matter what it may be, so that we might provide joy and satisfaction and fulfillment. Isn't that the thing we should do? He foreknew what? Our lives. He predestinated what? To be conformed to what? Jesus Christ. How close? So that we might, so that the world might look at vessels of brokenness and say, I see God in you. So that they might look at broken humanity, lost humanity, broken humanity, troubled humanity, fragile humanity, failing humanity, and say, But I see God in you. I see Christ in you. And that's the purpose of it all. Is that as we live our lives, God, God's predestinated plan is that every woman, every man, every boy, every girl is conformed and transformed and, and, and is reproduced into the image of Jesus Christ. Here. 
So that being said, what does He do? He calls us to do what? I don't know. For me to preach for you, I don't know. To be a good mom. You cannot place a monetary value on a good mom or good dad, can you? I still, 50 years later, almost 60 years later, I look and I know the power of, of, of the influence of a good mother. A, my, 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 my grandmother and my great-grandmother. I still remember their, the footprint indelibly etched in the memory and the fabric of my life. I at least maintain and retain part of them and me. And I look and I die and my kids will too. Why? Because they were good, because they were godly, because they were faithful, because they were dedicated, because they were Christians. Not just on Sundays. But everything they said and everything they did and the way in which they lived, the way in which they, can, they conducted themselves in heartache and heartbreak, because of all that, it made an imprint and impression on this young man, a young boy, and even, even as an, an older boy, that they have something I desperately need. And it was Jesus. And so He calls us and He justifies us and He will one day glorify us. None of this, none of this stuff is things that He... He might do is things he's already done in Jesus. What does that mean? Well, what it means is you can't touch me now. Why? God is for me. How cool is that? How'd you like to be in a tag team match with God? I'm just asking. Do you not realize we're in a battle all every day of our life? Yeah. We're on the battlefield of life every day. And I'm not that big. And I'm not that strong. And I must not be that smart. But you know what? I got somebody in my corner that says, Tap me up. Reaching, stretching towards me, saying, Tap me, please. And if I can tap Jesus, when he gets into the ring of life and takes my place, you know what? He turns the tables down. Oh, come on now. I don't know about you, but God's declaration is found in these closing verses. May I share them again with you? If God is for us, who stands against us? Help me, please. If God stands for me, I don't care who stands against me. Do you hear me? I don't care. I don't care. Because God stands for me. Nothing else matters. God stands with me. Nothing else matters. God holds me. God heals me. God helps me. Nothing else matters. God is on my side. God loves me. He demonstrated the natural that great love at Calvary. If God loves me that much, what am I scared of? If God is willing to give that much, what more do I need? Nothing. If God is for you and for me and for us, what more do we need? But He didn't stop there. He said, God didn't, He's not just for you, but He also spared not His Son. And if He didn't spare His Son, what more can God do? What, what condemnation can, can anybody level against you? Because it's God that justifies you. Isn't yeah. it? God's asking the, the devil and others say, that's a sorry human being. Yeah, He is. She is. But that's my Son. Well, that's my Son. And when God spends the judgment, Jesus has already got in front of me. You hear me? He's already taken a hit for me. He's already taken the bullet that you would for me. And so when Satan, whoever else, levies charges against me, I'm not condemned. My condemnation was placed on Jesus. Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the place called Mount Calvary for you, for me, and for others. And because of that, God is trying to make a point here that nothing can stop us. Nothing can hinder us. Nothing can defeat us. Because God is for us. And no matter what anybody says, God says, I love them. God says, I'm for him. God says, I'm with him. God says, I have justified him. He is not condemned. She is not condemned. He never can be and never will be. Hallelujah. So then, what can separate us from the love of God? Uh-oh. We would say pain. No. Trouble. No. Death. No. What can separate me and you and us from God's amazing love? Nothing. 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 Now, go through the litany one more time. I'll have How about tribulation? Troubles, trials, tragedy. No. How about distress, duress? No. 
How about persecution? No. What about famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. Sword? No. Well, what about death? No. Life? No. Angels? No. Principalities? Powers? No. Things right now? No. Things that were yesterday? No. Things in my future? No. Well, what about life and death? No. What about anything other than God? No. Nothing. Do you know what that does for me? <laughs> Do you know what that does for me? That makes me happy. Amen? Amen. Because I'm not scared anymore. That's right. Do you know what I believe that Texas Rangers' motto is? <coughs> if you believe in the right and don't quit coming, you can't be stopped. If you believe God has a plan and purpose for your life, Hell itself can't stop you. Hell itself can't stop you. Devil can't stop you. David can't stop you. Hell can't stop you. People should not stop you. Nothing should stop you. Because you believe that you have a plan and purpose. You believe that God is for you. And you believe that God will do everything God has to to make His plan and His purpose reality in your life. And if you believe that and you chase that and you follow that dream, if you call it that, it's a reality. If you do that, God makes me a promise. You will be victorious. Hallelujah. Amen. So what can I say in closing? These two things. When we give up those things we hold on to, we find His will. When we give up those things we hold on to, we will find His will. But as long as you say, no, God, you will never find God's will. As long as we're hard-headed, we will never find peace. We will never find assurance and confidence. You know something? I may be wrong with a lot of things, but I'm right on Jesus. Amen. Amen. When God removes something valuable, He replaces it with something in that. When God takes those things that are mine, God gives me things that are His. What do I have? What do I have under God's presence tree? What presence do I have for mine? You know what I've got? I've got peace. You hear me? I've got peace. I don't care what happens. My world has been shaken more than once. Amen? That's yours? My world has been shaken to the very roots, the very foundation of my soul has been rattled real hard more than once. And you know what I'm doing? The broken shards of my reality, when the dust settles and the smoke clears, and I'm still standing amidst the rubble of my life, you know what I do? I thank God that He loved me. That He had enough to trust me with His stuff. And He loves me enough in spite of my faults and my failures and my weaknesses and my stupidity that God believes that I'm strong enough in Him to fight the fight of faith until He gets tired of me fighting and calls me all the way home. Amen. Amen. I got peace. Peace that sells my soul. I have calm assurance that nothing will take me out of the fight until He's ready to take me home. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, I'm going to try to quit. I'm sorry. I don't know how to quit. <coughs> I don't know how to give up. I don't know how to. Because I haven't been trained to. And in Jesus, I find that's kind of good. Don't you? Because everybody around you say, you need to quit. Really? Really? Why? Well, you're making people nervous. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. Man, get nervous, man. Why? Because let God loose. Yes. Quench not the Spirit. Let Him free, man. Let Him free. And if you let God free, you'll be surprised when He does to you and me. Amen? Right. i got peace. I've got assurance. I've got confidence. I know the devil is a dog on the list, and I know who has his chain. And I ain't scared of him. He jumped to go poo. Now, trust me, my grandson just did it. And it's, you know, I'm 58 years old. I'm here about broke myself, you know. I'm walking in there, and it, 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 it's dark, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get dead. And he's hiding behind the door. When I walk by the door, he goes, boom! <laughs> and then I, after I settled down, I realized, okay, okay, okay. You know? Okay, okay, okay. Then I realized, oh, come on, now it's Dylan. You know what I'm saying? 
God and the devil do that to us all the time? He hides in the shadows and he jumps and says, boo! And we, we freak. And then when we realize, oh, that's just the devil trying to mess with me, then we suck it up in Jesus and say, get away from me, go on, that's it. My grandmother has a dog. I hate that dog. <laughs> but she loved that dog. And she has saved that dog from death. Oh, warning, no good for nothing. Curved dog. And that dog would sit. My mama, every time my grandmother would walk out of the house, that dog would be right by her. But this dog got a problem. He and my granddaddy loved it then. Papa would get behind the door. Woo! 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 Rolling all over the hillside. And when that, when that dog got through rolling the dip, you know what that dog would do? She'd get a traction up underneath her and she'd go, what is that? I learned you know, this. The devil can freak you out. But when you sell yourself in Jesus, you know what's going to happen? Yeah. I'm not scared of him. I'm not scared of life. I'm not scared of death. I'm not scared of me. You shouldn't be scared of me. Don't let me break you out. You shouldn't be scared of me. Because I love Jesus, man. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And so I've got peace. I've got confidence. I've got assurance. I've got hope. I've got joy. I've got Jesus. May I offer you Jesus. May I offer you peace that passes understanding and joy immeasurable. Joy unfathomable. Can you believe I said that word? <laughs> joy. Joy. If you don't have that gift, you ought to read the Scripture again and find Jesus. If you have Jesus, don't you think you ought to let Him lose a devil? Don't you think that you and I can make a difference around us?